Okay. <laughs> okay, Chidi, you're up next. Yeah, hello, I'm Chidi. Warble, I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, my question is um, main tech, ed tech, and uh, fintech. And um, I'm here in Nest to build the Nest Unicorn. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Great. Um, so I think. I have a couple of questions that I'm going to ask each of you. I'll try as much as possible to spread the questions around, um, but maybe I'll start with you know Rupa again. You know, you know, just was entrepreneurship kind of like always what you wanted to focus on? Because you know, as young people, I'm sure back at home, everybody was waiting for you to get a job and do all of that. So you know, when did entrepreneurship sort of become like you know something you wanted to try out? Okay, so for me, unfortunately, I didn't get exposure to entrepreneurship from home. Um, my parents dream of me becoming finance minister one day. <laughs> so, um, so I actually started on um, entrepreneurship one when I started working for a tech company in Cape Town called Yoko. So from that experience, um, our main customers were actually entrepreneurs and I got daily exposure to these people and I realized, wow, these people are doing amazing things and they are no more ordinary people like me. So I figured, hey, I'm sure I can totally do this. And that's why I'm here. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, maybe Chidi, you want to answer the same question. You know, when did entrepreneurship sort of like come into the picture for you? Yeah, I think it's I think I've always wanted to be an engineer. I started programming when I was thirteen. Wow. And then I wanted uh, I wanted to be like Bill Gates. Then. <laughs> <laughs> because most likely because of the money. Yeah. So I, I so I started uh, my first startup company when I was sixteen. That was a, a video game development company. Didn't work out well. No money. Right with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all it, it, it just um, I didn't want to work for anybody and then get subjected to nine to five and then because the the, the bill against the world and not people who work nine to five. There's a limit in which you can go in life with nine to five. So I wanted to I wanted freedom and I wanted a little time to can get <laughs> Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, so maybe Becky, the next question. You know, you know, what was your first experience with entrepreneurship? Well, I think for me, the you know the classic you know uh, school you would be given with exercises where you must go sell something at a cake day or a bake sale and stuff like that. So I, I remember at, at primary school every year from grade five, grade six, or grade seven, your last year at the primary school, you were always given uh, these projects to do uh, over the sports day, and okay. at those you know those sort of Introduced me to what entrepreneurship was like, and you know, even just the simple thing of, of trying to trying to figure out you know, how am I going to make money, you know, without putting too much money down, selling cakes, selling juices, you know, you know, all of those kind of things, selling popcorn, you know, and for me that was sort of the first exposure that I, I had into entrepreneurship. But I think from that point, the, the bug bites, you know, you always then start to look for other ways then you know, that you can do the same. You know, you can do it in a small little thing as, as a child. Kind of feel like actually it must not be that hard to do this as an adult. Okay. Alright, and you know, Gloria, what was your first experience with uh, entrepreneurship? For me, it was around 16 when I graduated. So I think it might have been public relations. Like, I mean, okay. We used to wait to go to high school. So, like, being back home, doing that, it was just technical. I remember I hated the acting profession. So, it was really hard because I had to try things. Until I created my first time in sports and working, and we had to move like this sports with uh, female role models to um, encourage girls in secondary school. And then I saw like I had to most of the cash that I was doing was actually for my girls and for it was my own cash that I got from other people. Really hard. Mm -hmm. And that's that was it. Okay, all right. Um, so maybe to so ask each of you, um, starting from you again, you know, um, what exactly did you? Why did you consider enrolling for a program like Nest? Right? Other entrepreneurs try and you know dive in and just do things um, on their own, learn things on their own. You know, why would you consider learning entrepreneurship, quote unquote? Okay, so for me, I think the one thing I was looking to do um, starting this year was actually to learn. So just expose okay. myself to as much learning as possible, and I also wanted to learn something practical, so something I could like learn and apply immediately, and. That's when I came across Mist, and it seems to like actually offer both the things that I really wanted to do. And 
because I was also working in the tech space, I thought it would be amazing to actually get this experience in the tech space as well. So I literally got into MIST because it was the top three things that I was looking for, an opportunity to learn and learn something practical that you could actually apply immediately within the tech space. Okay, all right, Gloria, off to you again. As for me, it's because I was actually doing a lot of stuff like running around projects and then I was doing other projects like people and I found myself with a lot of stuff and uh, one day I started on like, what do you want, Gloria? What can you really do? Like, what, what can you complain about? Oh, I don't really know what I can do. So, when I saw this, the first thing that came to mind is need to learn and invest. Like, I saw everything that I needed to get there and mess and that I didn't want to do it. It's a chance for me to complain about whatever I'm like, chance for me to learn, like, what I can really do best. Okay. All right. And Chidi, right? Um, I know you were already and still running, you know, one of your startups, you know, so why exactly did you say, okay, look, let me take a break for one year and go through a program like MES? Well, it's, it's quite simple. Like what I took here in the interview, I said, um, I believe I did a lot on my own. And I believe that I can do more, more help. So more more is expected, right? So okay. I said, okay, if I can do this on my own, then imagine what I can do when given that. Uh, more education and more education. So I can Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, awesome. Becky? Uh, for me, it was actually well, the, the biggest program was the opportunity to learn the tech skills. And I think I had I reached a point, you know, because I'd been working before and I'd reached a point where I actually wanted to now take that same plunge that you spoke of. And I think MIST offered a unique opportunity that I don't think any other organizations and incubators offer where they allow you the opportunity to come in and learn and throughout the year and then eventually when you put your plan in. So I think for me the biggest draw card was the opportunity to learn and then also the, the you know, they call it a soft landing as well. You know, you, there, there are not many opportunities like this. That, that was probably the biggest. Okay. Awesome. Um, so maybe, maybe switching gears a bit. Um, you know, I looked through some of the previous series, um, webinars in this series. And, you know, one key thing was always the interview process, how to prepare for things like that. So I know, you know, MES, we have a very rigorous and quite different process. So I guess the first question is, you know, uh, maybe to Chidi, how did you prepare for the MES interview and how different was it from kind of like any job interview you had been at before? Or uh, I've never been to any job interview. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, okay. It's not that compared but how I prepare, I just, I just say that I have to be myself, I would just, I wouldn't make anything about myself. I'll just come answer questions um, truthfully, just be myself. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, awesome. Be yourself. All right, um, Rupa, um, how different was it from kind of like any job interview you had been at, and how did you prepare? I think for me, much like Chidi, I, I was okay. like, you know what? I actually don't have experience in, a, in entrepreneurship, so I don't know what they're going to ask me, <laughs> but I'm going to be as authentic as I can possibly be about um, expressing my passions and my interests. But obviously, the, the standard thing, right, I had to research about the company, I had to research the industry, and um, just get myself acquainted with what's actually happening in the tech space. Okay. All right. Um, Gloria. Uh, for me, since I've been in data, I could be called as a I did lessons, I did lessons, and then I did lessons, and then, but the first year I came from that, I mm. actually, she, she's from Kenya, so I reached out to my, I asked her, like, how is the experience of mess is it worth it? Like how mm. the interview process is I remember she told me it's just for you. Mm. You've done a lot, you know what you're doing, so just be here, just be here. Okay. So the answer to your question is it worth it or not, it's still to be there. So okay. all right, awesome. Becky? Uh, so for me actually I did a lot of research, like, you know, trying to like, find out what mess was about and also looking into the portfolio companies because I figured you know we might be asked about what you know what are the companies that are coming out of I think just okay. really drilling down into what MEST themselves were doing and what the portfolio companies were doing. And then, you know, outside of that, I think, you know, uh, you gave us the structure of the, the interview process that it would be a group for, and then a one on one. But I think, you know, just for the one on one, I think it was just more for me to prepare and sort of really understand what's happening in Africa and the tech You know, there was a question that Ashwin um, asked me about, you know, okay, so what can you tell me about Kenya's tech ecosystem? <laughs> yeah, and like, this is something I read an article the night before, and you know, that was the information that I think it's just, it allowed me to give a, a clear answer and not just sort of 
Okay, yeah. awesome. Um, so if there's any common thread among all what you've said is just the research, right? Yeah. Um, if you're going to do something, you should be able to put in the necessary work to kind of like get information about it. And, you know, I think both of you mentioned something about being yourself, right? You know, you can, nobody can be you better than you. So, you know, why try to be someone else in an interview process, right? Great. Okay, so, and um, I'll just throw this question out there. Anybody can decide to answer first. Well, kind of like, what, what would you say was your biggest takeaway from the mess recruitment process, particularly the interview itself? <laughs> honesty. Honesty. Yeah, okay. Honesty. Like, for me, I feel like, like mm. it reached a point of actually freaking out to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is what I know and this is what I've done. So, at that point, it was just like, just be you, just be honest, and just be what you want to be. Okay. Great. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think for me, because it was the first sort of structured uh, interview where it was a group interview where I'd ever been. So I think for me, the the one thing is that you know, even even when even when even when you're in a in a in an environment where you're under pressure and you have to sort of present your best self, I think the one thing about the message process is like that group interview that like for you to sort of still have to work with other people. I think don't be afraid, even if you're going for a one-on-one -on -one interview for a company. Don't be afraid to ask people. I think. You know when you're preparing for advice and because okay. um, I, I ask for people for advice a lot. And all right, great. So, far. so I think Becky literally saw the words out of my mouth. It was, <laughs> it was also my first experience in a group interview. So actually being conscious of everybody else in the group and actually being able to relate to them. But I think um, also actually realizing that you are in a room with other people. So as much as being interviewers, yeah. It's still people, so you can still communicate with them on a level of them being people. If you've got questions, if you don't know something, actually just relate to them as people. Okay, awesome. Chidi, you want to add? I found that you shouldn't um, speak or act under pressure. You know, it's not something that's under pressure, but because most people responded uh, like they were under pressure, like when they were trying to introduce themselves, they felt like they had to say some certain things and then their voice was shaking and stuff like that. So okay. I realized that. The, the process is it's actually you human being to actually talk about it. So you should just you know, be yourself and not not, not act out. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, you know, key things here, be yourself, um, do the research and you know just be honest in all the processes. Um, good. So we're gonna switch again um, to kind of like what life is like as an entrepreneur in training right now at MES, right? Um, so maybe the first question, let me give it to Becky again. You know, what what would you say your biggest challenges are, you know, currently as an entrepreneur in training and how does it differ from, you know, being employed by someone? I think one of the biggest challenges is we only have 24 hours. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the program is, is quite, quite intense and, you know, it, it kind of pushes you um, up to your limits to take that. It really does push you to, to one more. But I think I think okay. the difference I think between normal work and now is that you know after every day of our classes and stuff, you know you go home, and you're working, you, you're just doing a lot more for your own personal development. Whereas you know you're working and you come home, you're tired. Even if you want to work, sometimes it's not always possible because you have to get up early. Okay. You know, so I think you know time is time is a, 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 a big challenge, and I think you know time time management. But I think one one thing that I'm finding is that passion kind of pulls you through because you know, every day you wake up it's something to look forward to. Okay. I think it's, it's a challenge you overcome by just, you know, a little bit of determination. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Robert? Wow, there is so much to learn in this world. <laughs> there is just so much to learn and I've, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with actually sort of prioritizing what I've learned. I want okay. to learn everything. Um, I've been exposed to so much by being in this um, program that I actually didn't know about. So the biggest challenge has probably been like actually learning to be an adult and to <laughs> prioritize. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, um, Chidi? Uh, the biggest challenge I have is uh, actually, um, what I experienced the same thing at the University of Minnesota. It's when you're actually studying, at the same time you do this. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's actually difficult you know, to understand when to do something. So I actually have big priorities in this right? so it's next first. When you're done with this or you have done certain things that you have to do, then you can 
little bit the other part. Yeah, so it's okay. really good to know. The rest of my Kenya is like I put my other life on, on oh, the course, yeah, yeah, because I was trying to give it my best here. So it's it, it's the priority, yeah, but I'm able to handle it. Okay, all right, Gloria, you want to add? Uh, for me, I say um, trying to maintain goals in my own goals because I think mm. like Stacey said, like time is really short and mm. there's so much that I have to do as an and yet yeah. at the same time, I think mean, they also need to see what I'm doing. So trying to balance those two has been kind of <laughs> for me. Yeah. yeah, so prioritizing like what Robert is yeah. making. Sure, great. And it's actually good you're all saying this because, you know, a lot of people reach out to us and are like, look, can I do this part time, you know, and stuff like that. And although, yes, it, it seems like you can, it just because MEST is not just you coming to learn, you're actually building something as you're learning, which is already like schooling and working at the same time. So imagine trying to do that and do something else again, which is why you're saying, you know, prioritizing and having more hours in a day would have been nice, right? <laughs> okay, so, um, just maybe a, a bit of like self-reflection in looking at your whole class, right? What would you say are some of the key qualities in those around you, right? Yes, you know what makes you a strong person, but you know, what have you seen in other candidates and other people in your cohort that are sort of like, you know, got to you sort of like interested and thinking that, look, oh yeah, that person is a great person. Um, do you want to start? Yes. Sure. Okay, okay. okay. so um, I've noticed that a lot of my um, fellow cohort people are avid readers. So mm -hmm. they read widely and they know a lot from a lot of different places. So okay. just having varied interests um, has been something that I've actually said is one of my goals now because I've, I've seen the value in it from the other people. Okay, all right. Um, Gloria? Well, something I've seen in my fellow is participants. It's reaching the point where you can agree, like, during the evening, when someone is really tired or during the morning, someone is really tired and they're like, jump out of their game, but they're still in class. To read it, to read other stuff, mm. despite of all the you know. and everything else. Okay, all right. Uh, for me, I think it's been openness and a willing, a willingness to share. I think you know that's 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 sort of blown blown me away a little bit because you you kind of expect you know you know sometimes people will be very really, like withdrawn and cagey and stuff, but you know you can approach anyone to talk about anything, and people are more often than not willing to share um, and give you advice as well. You know, you just have to take that initiative. I think that's that's been so just okay, great. Chidi? Yeah, what I what I've discovered is that people here are determined, you know, they're willing to fail, try and fail. Like I discovered um excellent job. So she went to go sell subos to people she had no idea. Okay. Um uh, they kept turning her down. She kept doing it until she got the entire civil suit and I was like <laughs> <laughs> so she was amazed and I was like, Wow, I can't do this. So I I I like, yeah, people here are very and okay, all right, awesome. Um, I think not everybody has to answer this, but you know, what would you say surprised you the most about MEST? Because I'm sure you all came here with your expectations of what it was going to be like, but what has surprised you the most here, good and bad? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you said diversity? So many. Uh, I get to hear. And it's good that you mentioned that because you know, also for me, one of the first things I noticed is that mess is that although you're kind of like in this kind of mess bubble, it still feels as if you're very international and very well traveled because you know you're living with someone from a different country, you're working with someone from a different country, and it's like you know you spend literally a whole day with somebody from a different country, right? And that just gives you a different perspective, knowing how they think, knowing you know what affects them that doesn't affect you and stuff like that. So I think for me it's also been a very key thing. But you know what else? Uh, for me, it's been the food and just how <laughs> just how spicy it is. <laughs> That's what I mean when you realize just how spicy it is. Probably the food. I mean, I think the training program, I think, has been, as, as actually, it's, it's been pleasantly surprising to see sort of how, you know, how, like, because, you know, you hear, about, you hear about the program, you hear about, um, you know, what you're going to be learning, 
But I think the, the most surprising thing has been the fellows that we have both here yeah. and at the incubator. You know, I think just that, you know even they they themselves are very diverse. You know, very knowledgeable. Um, so I think you know just that is also surprising. Just you know their skill and their expertise. Very very good. Okay. All right. Uh, for me, I think generally speaking, the most surprising thing is that there's so many how people can really move, like, you want it so fast, in such a short time. Uh, something happens, you don't even have to think twice for you more than two hours on your bike, they're always there for you, like, mm. sometimes I don't miss my family, like, <laughs> I have my own family, like, whatever happens, I know, like, all will be there for me. <laughs> okay, Rupa? I think for me it's also sort of diversity, but slightly different in the sense that um, I have never been exposed to so many cultures, and then when you actually all come together, you realize that no matter if you're from Nigeria, we all listen to the same music, we all have the same <laughs> interests. I promise, I expected it to be so different. I thought people were like alien from wherever you're coming from, but like actually realizing that we have the same interests, we watch the same movies, we watch the same series. It's just insane. So I think it's also a show just on how much we can do together as Africans. Yeah. Um, because like as much as we're different, we're very much the same. same. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Great. Um, so uh, maybe like for each of you, kind of like tell us um, what your typical work day is like. You know, what time do you wake up? What do you do? And kind of like how your day is shaped. Like, because I think that could be helpful helpful to some people that are considering coming into a program like this. Maybe not necessarily messed, but just Going into high intensity programs, how does that affect your day and you know how do you plan your day? So Becky, you go first. So my day usually starts at five in the morning. I wake up and I read my Bible plan, which I've got going. I'm giving myself a goal to read the Bible in a year. Mm, awesome. So that's like it takes maybe about fifteen to twenty minutes um, in the morning and then I get up and then I go exercise. So yeah, exercise for me is a big, big sort of part of part of my day. It's like the one thing that kind of sets me in motion and gets me going. Um, by that time, back sort of around 6.37, get ready, come to campus by sort of 7.38, um, have breakfast, and then in our program, well, from about 9 till, 9 till 5, um, okay. then in the, the evenings are mostly spent then working, reading, doing extra stuff. Uh, we do have, sometimes we do have like evening classes, evening sessions, uh, or workshops, every other day, but you know, that's on Monday, we can take as much as possible after hours working, and then like, I mean, I haven't been to many events in, in Accra, but you know, we've been to sort of pub night, uh, quiz nights um, in Osu. In, because in, in I'm Yeah. yeah. So, again, really, so, also, you try to find time as well just to sort of relax and uh, those breaks, especially over uh, on weekends as well, just to switch off, but just as important as the time that you spend working. You yeah. have to find a way to disconnect. So, you need to sort of take yourself away and then come back ready to. Fresh perspective. Again, yeah. So, right. yeah, that's what my day looks like most, most of the time. All right, Clara. My day also starts at five, and sometimes I feel busy. I I have at five and go, and then I come back at seven, and then we class, and uh, we take class until five. So basically, in the evening, it depends time to time. So sometimes I sleep by around ten, or I have to wake up by like, my own. Like my own personal study is something from there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And stuff. So, but during the weekend, that's when I rest, Awesome. Chidi? Yeah, my day started before. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I respond to emails. <laughs> then, I, I get then I work because I try to do the exercise. So I have to try to walk to school. During the lunch time, I do contact with the girl just for so person have a meeting. I need time. Okay. I'm 
about anesthesia. I just have that quietness here. And this is like I get back. Sorry for me. <laughs> yeah, then on Fridays. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we get you, we get you, we get you, Rupa, how about you? Okay, so my day typically starts anytime between the There's a lot of alarm snoozing that happens in the <laughs> And uh, so I occasionally go and exercise, it has to happen at least twice a week. Um, I take some time in the morning to just reflect and like plan my day, go through my personal development goals and like just stay on track with that. Um, go to school. Probably 7:30. Our classes start at nine, and then we break off at 5 p.m. I usually have either workshops or other classes after after school, and typically the day ends at like midnight or just after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And then yeah, the cycle continues. Friday is day off. We've just started a marathon of Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. All right. And yeah, weekends also there's a lot of working that happens. At times we have projects during the weekends that have to yeah that go through the weekends. And if that's not happening, there is still like time for personal study as well. As well. Okay. Awesome. Um, so switching themes again, uh, we're going to talk about like the culture, right? Um, I think there's been a lot said about workplace culture, and people think culture is by allowing dogs in your office or doing yoga, <laughs> or doing yoga in the office. Everybody has their different definition of what makes good culture. But you know, what would you say? How would you describe the culture at Mess? Let me start from Chibi. Yeah, the culture is really tricky. Amazing, you know, okay. you know, something entrepreneurial, you know, right? Yeah. So, yeah. In one place, you know, without you know, the roof going down, so it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So, you know, usually when I, I, I go to um, tech conferences in Nigeria, I meet a lot of programmers. I have so much ego, mm -hmm. so it's like we can't stand ourselves when I get in. So everybody's trying to explain, trying to show the other person how good they are. But in here, nobody's trying to prove. They are what they're trying to learn, and that's mm -hmm. amazing. They're not trying to compete, they're trying to learn. You know, okay, so awesome. We, the way we treat ourselves is amazing. All right, great. Gloria? Um, Okay. I think one of the things that uh, the, the way I see it is that I think we all realize and we recognize that yeah, and we're just kind of passing by as it were. Um, not in the sense that you know we leave there and forget about it, you know, going to meet people. I think one thing is that you know whilst we're here in Accra and we're all living together, we're all trying to make the best of the the, the, the experience for each of us, and you know that that comes through every day and how people treat each other. You know, from from morning to night, there's there's always there's always some kind of some level of some level of positivity and, and you know it's it's really it's really heartwarming and and and, and, and good to see it and it makes sure that you settle down really easily because it's, there's no divide and no sex in it. I think that's that for me has been the, the the greatest thing about the culture, the experience of the culture. Okay, great. And Roba? Okay, so for me it's probably been the generosity of people, just with, with what they're good at and their skills, right? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people here who are like hosting um, small workshops just to share whatever skills they have. There's a French class where one of um, our EITs is share, teaching others how to speak French. There's um, a Code Wars class that happens on Sundays where someone is teaching other people who are like entry level um, coders how to actually just like solve problems in technology. So definitely the generosity and the kindness. I, I got sick and I had like 50 people in my room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's been quite overwhelming. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, great. Um, and this question is sort of like related to the other one, which is like, what would you say makes MEST stand out from, you know, other training programs that might be similar or doing the same things? Like, you know, what exactly stands MEST out from the rest of them? You go first. 
Okay, so um, I think, well, I haven't been to many, too many other programs. I have been exposed to them, but I think the fact that you can get into meds, you don't, you're not forced to come with an idea. In fact, they tell you, you're going to get here and your idea is going to change, right? So <laughs> accept that. Yeah. And um, they, they provide sort of that supportive environment where you're allowed to fail. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably one thing that stands out for me. Okay, all right, Becky? For me, I think the, like, the opportunity in itself is, Second to none because nobody is going to give you a year of, of, of your life to really just go and really immerse yourself in building a great product. Um, I, I, I don't, I haven't seen that anywhere, and I think that's for me has been the has been the really great part of, of, of being in there. I think you know it, it, it really is amazing just to see how how everyone is just trying to ensure that you succeed. You have a platform to succeed rather than placing this expectation that you must succeed. Okay, all right, great. Zora? Uh, only one thing stands out from other things in the environment actually allows you to hold on like you fail and you still learn from working mm -hmm. because you just want to make it. Okay. It's something that really amazing. All right, awesome. Chidi? Here is the way it fails and the focus on how many times you fail or your performance in class or driver. I think they will give more focus on those who are not performing well. Kind of bring everybody in the same spot, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not equality, it's equity to try to make sure that everybody's in the same place, you know. So if you're not performing, you're not speaking in class. Like when I know I speak in class, I get certain people and ask me, why are you speaking in class? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have to have a question, you should if you have something to share, speak up. Yeah. So it's that it's the ability for them trying to take everybody along. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Great. And you know, I think it's very great to hear you all say this because I think if there's anything, I don't like to say this a lot of times, but as Africans, we always seem like the culture that is like me first, only me, in, and you know, only my family members as well. But I think what MES sort of like shows is that, look, although yes, we're from different backgrounds, we have different experiences, the sense that we're all trying to achieve the same thing kind of like pulls everybody together. And then there's just that, like you said, equity, not exactly equality, but just equity among everybody. All right, great. And I think um, the final sort of like question is a lot of the guys that will be watching this are kind of like at the verge of either just finishing from high school or finishing from college and about to make decisions about their careers and all of that. You know, just it could be anything. It doesn't have to be exactly related to MEST or whatnot. But what is that one thing you would say that you wish someone had told you, say, a few years back before you made certain decisions? Like, you know, what kind of advice would you give? Let me start from Becky. Yes. So for me, it's don't be afraid to be out of your comfort zone. So uh, mm -hmm. my own personal experience is that I studied economics, and you know, by the time I, I came to MES, I was working in supply chain and logistics. So every step of the way, I've always put myself out of my comfort zone. And I think you know, it's one thing to study something, but I think the way you end up, you know, is, is a result of the choices and what you want to get. So put yourself out of your comfort zone. Be uncomfortable and willing to learn. So that that for me has been the Thing. You know, sometimes you have to take a step back to take to go forward, so as long as you'll be learning and growing, I think that's that 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 that's the most important. Okay. Chidi? Here yeah, um if someone told me that failure is success when you learn from it, I would that would be an amazing thing because I've come to understand, I learned that myself that it doesn't matter how many times you fail, it's okay to fail with that. So the more you fail it's, you learn something from it. So that's why that's where the success comes from. So you learn something from it and then Try again more intelligently. So, yeah, really Okay, great. Gloria? For me, I think it's a lot of things. I encourage you to take a lot of things. I think that you have to go in your first time. Okay, great. Rova? Um, I think the biggest challenge is most people try and figure out their entire lives. You, you want to get out of high school, out of college, and know exactly what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I think what I've learned is um, your, your journey is a process, and you need to expose yourself to as much learning and growth and opportunities as possible. Very slowly, your path starts getting fixed and like designed as you go through all these processes. So don't put too much pressure on yourself on figuring out the end of your life. You're probably not going to end up doing what you think you're going to do. <laughs> true, true. So yeah, just expose yourself to learning and growth and opportunities.
All right, awesome, awesome. So I'm just gonna run through quickly what you know, you know, they all said. So you know, Becky spoke about you know comfort zone. How you know just because your background is in a certain thing doesn't mean you can't try out you know new things. And then that leads into what you know Chidi said. How you know if you try a new thing and then you fail, it's not bad as long as you learn from it because that's where success comes from. And you know Gloria spoke about it not being too late. I think it's not too late to try again. It's not too late to try something new. And it's not too late to you know go back to what you've done before to do it again, right? And you know Rupa wrapped it up by saying, look, everything is it's a process. It's gonna take time. Um, yes, you can figure out the next two steps, but. To be honest, one step can open up five new steps that you didn't have knowledge of before, right? So I think that even for me has been the story of my life, right? Like I couldn't have imagined being here because like I didn't even know about MEST. I wasn't really involved in tech, but all of a sudden I'm here doing what I'm doing. So I think for me, if I was going to add on to that, it's that, you know, whatever your hands find to do in the moment, do it to the best of your ability because you're not really sure what it'll plug into in a later phase. You know, it's all about making those tiny investments now for kind of like the future success that you get. All right, great. Um, I know these sessions are usually about, you know, one hour long, but I think at MEST we like to keep things, you know, <laughs> sharp, <laughs> sharp and nifty. But um, thank you, y'all, for kind of like having us, Diana. We really appreciate this opportunity. Um, we look forward to doing this again, you know, with even more different people and talk about something else uh, besides the entrepreneurship thing. But um, really great being on this platform, and we hope to do this again sometime soon. So um, everybody say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.